first day. Yesterday, a man asked a beautiful question. He asked whether a moon ketu conjunction is a visha yoga. Vish means poison. So he is asking that whether moon and ketu conjunction leads to a yoga that is as bad as poison. You see, this is how there are so many myths about Ketu, about Chandra Ketu conjunction. But today, through this podcast, I want to let you all know that the most beautiful conjunction is the conjunction of Moon and Ketu. Ketu is minus, Moon is mind. When you enter in the domain of no mind, minus mind you can attain the bliss the peace the joy and that is why in the chart of many enlightened masters there is a close connection of moon with ketu and that is why this moon ketu conjunction is not a visha yoga it is a shiva yoga And it was Lord Shiva who drank the poison. Nobody dared, but he just took it and he drank it. And because he took it, he was able to save this world. So Moon Ketu conjunction is a conjunction through which you can do something which others cannot do. You can jump. You are the person who will jump first and think later. Reminds me of Jesus. When Jesus was passing by, he met Peter the fisherman and that was their first meeting. Peter was not even aware of who Jesus is, but just they meet and Jesus looks into his eyes and says, follow me. And Peter is an uneducated man. He is not intellectual, but he has a certain intelligence. He is a man of heart. He looks into the eyes of Jesus. He understands that this man is something and he drops everything. He drops that net. And he starts following Jesus. And Jesus says, follow me. I will make you the fisher of men. Now imagine. Imagine if any other person would have been there. He would have asked 100 questions. All intellectualism he would have showcased. But Peter was something else. Maybe he was a Chandra Ketu person. And it is this same Peter fisherman who later became Saint Peter. You see, this is the power of Ketu, that it can lead you to the greatest heights of consciousness.
leads you to emptiness and let me tell you the cup is useful because it is empty this cup is empty and because it is empty i can use it if it was full it was of no use to me the cup is useful because it is empty and that is how the whole dynamics of this human life is that the more you remain empty the more you remain unoccupied the more you will progress in your meditations that is why the master has said that you need not learn any techniques of meditation because techniques of meditation means again you are bringing the mind and when mind is there meditation cannot happen so the only way meditation can flower is when you keep yourself unoccupied so in this material life whatever needs to be done to pay your bills you surely have to do it but please make sure that you don't make yourself so much occupied that you don't have time for yourself and that is why ketu is very very significant when it comes to progressing on your spiritual path in this podcast i have talked more on the moon ketu conjunction and through this podcast you will also understand the depth and the beauty of ketu sri ketu so let's begin Ketu is a healer and so Ketu with moon is not a visha yoga it is a shiva yoga it is very unfortunate that people are defaming ketu but till i am alive till my close fellow travelers and followers are alive we will ensure that nobody defames ketu till the last breath of my life i will keep saying again and again and again that ketu is absolutely harmless it is the greatest irony of this kali yuga that the one who is a provider is being labeled as a killer in d9 or any d chart the conjunction of moon with ketu is definitely a blessing in disguise ketu distorts the mind ketu makes the mind disappear and it is only when there is no mind that meditation is possible spiritual progress is possible with mind meditation is not possible with no mind meditation manifests for spiritual life for spiritual progress ketu is necessary for material life rahu is necessary moon coming in contact with ketu followed with a beautiful positive aspect from jupiter is the most fantastic placement for spiritual upliftment ketu the focus is on turning in rahu the focus is on turning on 
Ketu Moon is a strange guy. He may have sex, but if a time comes in his life, then he may simply drop the idea of having sex, and forever that idea leads him to sannyas, a life of celibacy, a life of sannyasi. Rahu Moon is a very sexual person. He goes on having sex, many sexual fantasies. He gets turned on very easily. In fact, for a woman to attract a Moon Rahu man is pretty easy. Rahu Moon man is too weak when it comes to the opposite sex. They fall easily to their temptations. Rahu Moon men therefore become easy victims of relationships. But Moon Ketu is a man without head, just a positive guidance and he never ever goes back to sex. He has moved beyond sex, he has embarked on the journey beyond. Remember, sex is a meeting of two bodies. The most superficial meeting, love is the meeting of minds, deeper than sex, but yet not very deep. Prayer is the meeting of beings, but still two remain two. Meditation is the ultimate meeting, the two disappear, only one remains. Just for my close followers, I am sharing a wonderful experience in relation to this beautiful Moon Ketu conjunction. And it is so wonderful that it touched my heart. It may also touch yours. On a beautiful evening, I was reading about a man who went on to become a great healer, a yogi. I found his birthday and birth year. Just casually I cast his horoscope and then there it was, a moon with Ketu in the sign of Pisces. And the best part is that I had a definite hunch before casting his horoscope that his moon must have some connection with Ketu. And it was, it really was and it was in the sign of Pisces. The marriage of Moon and Ketu had happened in the sign of Pisces. And because Ketu is exalted in Pisces, since Pisces is the twelfth sign and one of my favorite signs of all twelve zodiacs, Ketu proved extremely beneficial for him. His Ketu with Moon in Pisces worked great wonders, spiritual wonders for him. One has to realize what does exalt in reality mean? Mohan one day asked, What is this thing called exalt in astrology? I said, Mohan, you have asked a beautiful question. Exalt is the state of maturity. What happens when you mature? What happens when your bonds mature? When a savings bond matures, you get the principal amount plus all of the accrued interest. Similarly, when a planet comes to its exaltation point, it means it has matured. Now it is ready to pay you all that you have been investing, that is through your good karma, along with the interest, that is the benefits. In the unending cycle of birth and death, every individual goes through births in which a certain planet is either at inception level, meaning debilitated, or maturity level, meaning exalted. A man with exalted planets generally has many good qualities, so he or she lives by following certain ethics and principles. It is obvious that such men of ethics earn less, because in the age of Rahu, values have taken back seat and greed has taken the front seat. The do more is in action. Ethical people cannot do more. They believe in doing based on the needs and not wants. A man with a debilitated planet 
generally has qualities of lower nature so earning plenty of money in this rahu age becomes easy for him because he has absolutely no values no ethics no principles and there is nothing that could stop him from earning money for such men and women the saying baap bada na bhaiya sabse bada rupaiya goes well in fact they have been believing in this philosophy for many births and so they carry on with their stupidity earning millions of rupees or dollars it is a different story that they are never happy with what they have the feeling of dissatisfaction continues to haunt them they die in utter misery with pain and dissatisfaction exalted planets may not make you rich or a millionaire but they will certainly bring an abundance of wisdom love satisfaction happiness and joy to your life one has to understand how a matured being will behave and how a novice would behave a matured being is aware of the fake gold that the world is running behind a novice a not so evolved soul keeps running behind money his focus is on money a matured being's focus is on self growth he understands the fact that when self growth happens money comes on its own you don't have to chase money one has to understand maturity in depth ketu is a highly matured being a meditative being it is difficult to find a mature person because every person you come across has some desire either the desire is to have money or the desire is to have moksha either the desire is to have power or the desire is to experience god the desire is there and a mature person is a person without any desire he is the buddha if you meet buddha you will find him with absolutely no desire he is totally relaxed you may provoke him you may go on pressing all the buttons that you have known but you cannot disturb the buddha you cannot make him angry and you cannot make him happy he is relaxing with the whole your words won't affect him maturity is not to desire things maturity is relaxing with the whole immaturity is conflict struggle the part fighting with the whole the part coming in tune with the whole coming to a harmonious settlement with the whole not in defeat but in understanding is maturity to realize that nothing can be done is maturity nothing can be done and that is the whole message of ketu of the divine masters that you simply have to go with the flow you have to simply go on accepting living with acceptance the central concept of buddhism and buddha is of tathat tathat is living with suchness such is the situation such is the happening it is raining you cannot do anything you simply live in the suchness tathat understand the fact that a moon ketu conjunction is a beautiful conjunction that provides you with all the qualities that can help you to live your life in acceptance for a matured person there is no goal to have goals is like having toys the matured person is perfectly aware that there is no need to have any toys any goals there is no need to seek anything on the outside all that is is within you just have to come to it realize it by turning inwards remember 
यू शुड ड्रॉप द आइडिया ऑफ बिकमिंग समबडी बिकॉज यू आर ऑलरेडी अ मास्टर पीस यू कैनॉट बी इम्प्रूवड यू हैव ओनली टू कम टू इट टू नो इट टू रियलाइज इट मून वेन कम्स विथ केतु वॉट हैपन्स मून द माइंड इज नाव अंडर द कमांड ऑफ केतु but this conjunction becomes more matured from spiritual perspective when moon and ketu not only conjunct but fall in the same nakshatra then the honeymoon truly takes place and then through this honeymoon what comes out what manifests is deep meditation and it is beautiful a true yogi is in the state of going nowhere but only within nowhere to go just in just in just turning inward that's ketu and it is this ketu that can bring a great transformation within you and real transformation happens only when you move from outside to inside the whole story of ketu is the inside story the whole story of rahu is the outside story as long as you remain stuck in the outside story you remain miserable the moment you sit down close your eyes and start exploring the inside story you start slipping out of the mind that is moon and the moment there is no mind there is no misery you become free you experience freedom for the very first time in your life for the real freedom comes only when you slip out of the mind mind is your prison no mind is your freedom mind is your ignorance no mind is your enlightenment move from mind to no mind this is the whole path this is the whole religion ketu unlocks the prison that is the mind it is ketu that leads you to the final liberation moksha ketu therefore exhales in the 12th sign of pisces the 12th house of the kala purush kundali 12th the house of liberation moksha end end of the cycle of birth and rebirths and liberation comes only when the soul has overcome the mind it is a myth that liberation comes after death liberation of the state of total freedom comes to you when you are very much alive in human form the great yogis experience moksha very much when they are alive jesus mahavira buddha and the many many divine masters attained liberation when alive and not after death ketu moon can jump into the unknown it brings courage it brings intelligence it overcomes intellectualism which is a poor substitute for intelligence a ketu moon man or woman is not to be taken lightly a tremendous energy is within them how they use it depends on the sign in which this conjunction happens and the aspects that influence this holy conjunction ketu moon is one of the best conjunctions in fact it is even better than moon jupiter moon jupiter brings ego it brings more strength to the mind the mind becomes powerful this is a good conjunction from material perspective but from spiritual perspective it often becomes a hurdle such a man or woman is obsessed to do good doing good is good 
but getting obsessed to do good often boomerangs and leads them to depression the whole essence of meditation is to drop the mind to overcome the mind and who can be the most suitable than sri ketu one who has no head no mind ketu can then take moon under its control it is a beautiful conjunction that helps you to control your mind mind is a beautiful slave but a dangerous master when moon ketu mind can be enslaved when moon rahu mind makes you its slave and buddha says rule your mind before the mind rules over you the mind is restless the nature of the mind is being restless a man or woman ruled by the mind is always restless but if you watch if you observe the buddha a meditative being his mind is still he is not restless he is not worried he is not disturbed he is no more meditating he is meditation no thoughts no mind no choice just being silent rooted in yourself that is how a meditative being is deeply rooted within a woman or a man with a moon ketu conjunction should worship lord ganesha should meditate on his name om gam ganapatai namaha om gam ganapatai namaha many times almost all times a person having prominent ketu is often a devotee of ganesha or shiva it is through the worship of ganesha and shiva that you will be able to still the wavering mind and once the mind becomes still overcoming it becomes far easier than otherwise the great spiritual master avatar meher baba quotes a mind that is fast is sick a mind that is slow is a sound a mind that is still is divine the conjunction of ketu with the mind that is with the moon is a signal that the potential to transcend the potential to progress spiritually is there if support of positive energy such as drushti of jupiter fifth seventh or ninth aspect exists in the birth chart that is if jupiter casts its fifth seventh or ninth drushti on moon ketu conjunction then it is a beautiful development however if moon ketu conjunction receives certain negative aspects or drushti from shani or from mars then this conjunction will not fructify in its true sense because ketu wants support of guru when guru stands with his grace that is his drushti on this beautiful conjunction then you are meeting a man who is going to change going to transform going to be a buddha remember a man becomes a buddha the moment he accepts all that life brings with gratitude and you will be able to accept only when the mind becomes nil zero and it becomes zero or nil only with the arrival of ketu ketu therefore is a great blessing in disguise it is natural that the process is painful the process of enlightenment is always painful because it brings the destruction of the illusive mind always remember enlightenment is a destructive process it has nothing to do with becoming better or being happier enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth it's seeing through the facade of pretense it's the complete eradication of everything we imagined to be true 
all the illusions that you imagined to be true are burned up so as to bring you face to face with the truth the ultimate truth and truth you can face only when the mind is no more avatar meher baba says do not listen to the voice of the mind listen to the voice of the heart the mind wavers the heart does not the mind is the home of doubts reasoning and theories the heart when purified becomes the dwelling of the beloved read your heart of low desires malice selfishness and god will manifest in you as your true self one of the greatest saints avatar meher baba the man who transformed many madmen into enlightened beings and he traveled across the world millions and millions of people followed him but he rarely would talk with anyone for the major part of his life he would simply write if someone would come to seek his darshan meher baba would write blessings and that's all but even those written words would move would transform the person in totality moon ketu can make you a man of heart a woman of heart and a heartful man or woman is beautiful such a man such a woman can relate to the words of the master such a man such a woman can progress in the true sense realize and i have been insisting to all my followers and listeners that realize is the word and realization happens through the heart and not the mind realization happens through intelligence and not intellectualism but who wants to listen shallowness has taken over this world but among this shallow men and women there are a few who can arise above the monkey mind my sharing is for those selective beings beings who are followers of the heart and not of the mind let the mind evaporate ketu can do it the question is whether you are willing to do it by realizing the many benefits of ketu by having a positive perspective towards ketu towards life towards yourself because it is only when you are positive you can appreciate all that is positive when you love yourself you can love others when you are happy you can spread happiness around so first the focus has to be on you to focus on yourself is not selfishness it is simply being yourself be yourself people don't have to like you and you don't have to care you don't have to do anything special to get likes you just have to be yourself those who can vibrate with your thoughts with your sharing will come will be pulled towards you because always remember there is always somebody out there who understands you who resonates with you not everyone likes all flavors but each flavor is someone's favorite so come come you all and focus within spend every day a few minutes in a closed room with your self meditating breathing breathe in breathe out and focus on the name of the lord while you do so there is absolutely no need of any techniques techniques are of the mind and the moment you start seeking techniques to meditate you are bringing forth the monkey mind nothing is ever going to manifest so no techniques just feeling just love just the nectar of your devotion 
and that is enough to take you towards the higher altitudes of consciousness people like to talk with others they like to keep chatting but talking and chatting with others takes you away from yourself by talking and chatting you may make many connections these connections may help you to prosper in life but from within you become poorer you move away from yourself you get into a lot of noise and then you wonder what is going wrong with my life nothing is going wrong with your life but everything is going wrong within you the way is to come back home the way is to return to your source and the source is within you so close your eyes and start moving back towards the source towards the self only then there is a possibility to experience peace only then there is going to be love joy and happiness in your life it all begins within and ketu's message therefore is in just two words turn in to turn in means all the 24 hours go on turning in whenever you find a moment to turn turn and it is such a simple act to turn within nobody's help is needed no ladder is needed no door has to be opened just close your eyes and look in sitting in a bus traveling in a train you can do it any time and slowly slowly you don't even need to close your eyes the remembrance simply remains of its own accord focus on turning in that's the only message of ketu and that is what can happen with this beautiful conjunction moon ketu conjunction which is not a visha yoga but a shiva yoga a great blessing of lord shiva जय श्री गणेशा जय गुरु ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम